I feel like Titans is a real departure from everything we've seen in live action uh, DC TV shows. So, what what kind of audience are you intending to reach with this? Like, who who did you have in mind when you were developing this project? Excellent question. I just asked that. Then. I mean. I don't know if we really wrote toward an audience, but certainly there was a lot of respect for the fans. We had a few hardcore fans, Titans fans, you know, who were into it in high school and junior high on our staff. So there was a respect for the show and for the work that had been done by both of Braz and Jeff. So clearly there was, we cared a lot about those characters and doing them justice. And we knew it wasn't going to be a CW show, for sure, in terms of its tone. And in, now, I like the CW shows, but in order to get it, those are free shows, right? Um, relatively free. And in order to do a pay service show, it was important that we give people something that they couldn't see on normal TV. So it required you know, production values that were more elevated, more cinematic, music. So it was trying to create more of a movie experience for television. And I know a lot of shows try to do that, but we did that really specifically. In terms of the, we also wanted to make, a lot of our audience has grown up with these characters through childhood and adolescence, so we want to try to meet them where they are in their lives right now, which are struggles about identity, confusion about, you know, integrating darkness and light, um, and having a kind of psychological dimension to these characters to slow them down so they didn't get engulfed by some master big bad plot that, uh, that took over any kind of sense of personality or relationship. Um, what was the biggest challenge about bringing these characters to a show like this? Well, setting the worlds, you know, trying to figure out what the worlds are, um, you know, balancing superpowers and character stories. I mean, the story of the show comes alive pretty often when the superpowers are there, but it's you can't stay there, you can't live just there in the world of powers. So it was balancing the psychological reality, making it grounded, but still allow for a world where Raven can be Raven, you know, Starfire can be Starfire. It's that's always a struggle to make it feel, and you kind of only know it when you see it, to go, okay, that feels too much, or this feels now we're getting to the point where we're in fantasy. So I think tonally, it was a big challenge. You mentioned the CW shows, and um, they tend to do this like baddie of the season thing. Are you guys going to do something similar, or are you going to sort of depart from that in terms of season two now that we know you have a season two? Like, will we see some stuff continue, or? I'll tell you when I know. <laughs> Um, since we just got announced. But when we actually sit down to do it, I mean, you need, you know, there's a reason that you come up with those stories, right, of, of a villain and, and something to fight over, especially in a family story, because you need reasons, external reasons. We also struggle with these in our own families. It's external reasons that close apart and the internal things that close apart. Uh, in terms of the external, we haven't figured it out yet, but I'm pretty confident we will have a big bad in season two. Uh, but what it is, I don't know. that we would see Robin at this point in his life with a more antagonistic relationship with Batman. Like, I know in different incarnations, like, how they split and he becomes his own leader and whatever. But why did you decide, like, to have the Jason angle with it and have that be a, an animosity between, like, father and son sort of thing? Well, it's a story. In many ways, there's many father-son stories. It's a great question in, in our, on our show, um, and in, fam in, in any kind of family. It's our show is a family show, so there's going to be a father-son dynamic in there. We've, that was important to us. It really stemmed from an argument we had in the writers' room, which is what actually is the legacy of Bruce, Bruce's upbringing. Um, up there was a strong argument that would play on both sides. It was fairly polarized as it was dysfunctional, a nature versus nurture thing, that, Bruce, that Dick would have been a different person had his parents not died and had Bruce not died. And then there was a side of him saying, actually, Dick got a lot out of that. He's blaming something on his dad that actually isn't, it was in him that he thinks his father imposed upon him. And out of that argument came the structure and the creation of that character. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Trying to figure out which part of these characters' stories to tell. 
Well, I can't. It's better to talk to Akiva or Jeff about the pilot since I didn't write the pilot. I came in after they'd written the pilot. They'd spent seven years doing it. So that was a long R&D process for them to figure out what stories they wanted to tell and how to go about it. Focusing on Starfire, Raven, Beast Boy, and Robin in the, in the core story. Then we branched out to other characters, you know, Hawk and Dove, Hawk and Troy. It was important that I, I, I kind of, as I said before, I mean, it was important for us to be respectful with those characters and people's relationship with the characters, but not that a lot of this is that they needed to grow with the audience. And so I feel like we wanted to give them the psychological dimension that the former incarnations of them didn't have the time or the format to show. <laughs> Who would I want to fight beside? Well, I'm not very strong and I got a bad shoulder, so I need someone to be fairly acrobatic and quick. I mean, Gump's pretty awesome, you know? But I think Robin would get me in a fight I might not get out of. <laughs> He's got a big appetite for that. So I'd take Dove. I'd go Dove. Yeah. Even if we lost, we'd look good doing it. <laughs> uh, I want to circle back to the idea of the antagonist, because we, I, I've seen the first three episodes since so the but we still don't really have a whole lot of an idea about who the Titans are yeah. at this point. So is there anything else that you can take us well, if you know anything about Raven's story, it's a struggle for identity. Everybody's trying to deal with their parents in the show. Starfire doesn't know she, who she is. Raven thinks she has a mom, but then that mom is that she's that she may be told that it's not her mom. So in that struggle for identity emerges the big bad thing. Despite his reputation for being like a loner, has one of the like the largest adopted family ever. So I'm wondering, like, as you move forward, are there any other members of the Bat family besides the people that you really feel would add a lot of um, interesting nuance to the show? Like, who would you want to grab out from the Bat family to kind of take any Bat girl? <laughs> I mean, I love that. Um, it's curious, and I'm not being coy. I'd have to really, you know, you always weigh them in in terms of what, what interesting stories can you get out of them, rather than what the costume does to the photo, right. you know? So, they're all cool, and they're all, they all bring something, but in terms of the stories that we're telling, I'm sorry, I mean, no, yeah. lost of light. <laughs> no. I don't know yet. Because I was, when you were talking, I don't know if there's any comments. Who would you want to see? I was thinking Cassandra Cage, because she has her mom, she's with Lady Shiva, yeah. and she'd be a great villain, and we've never really right. seen her before. Um, but I don't know if that would be in conflict with the place that she sees doing with the birds of spring. So, like, is there That's, any conflict about Yeah, the there's a lot of that. you got to okay. pat it. You know, so everything we do has to kind of, it's a phone call and a conversation. I mean, it was helpful for me in the first season that I had Jeff Johns to my right, Pete to my left at the end of the table. So <laughs> I could go to Jeff, go, we want to do this, what do you think? And he could either say yes right there or I'll make a call and we know very soon. Um, that was helpful. He's got such an encyclopedic knowledge of that DC universe that it's pretty quick when you get a character, and so do some of our writers, Brian Hill, who's a noted comic book writer, we have Gab Stanton, who is deeply entrenched in the world of Titans. So we were able to, a lot of names got thrown out, and that's, we have this process of vetting it, and then there's the, just like you said, there's the corporate side of it. Thank, Thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs> of all women. <laughs> <laughs>